Hello, I'm Martin Nix, and I'm an inventor. I have nine patents in solar energy, and uh, working to see if we can get these inventions into mass production. I have to say that right now in the solar industry, we have a problem. It's called the duct curve. Basically, uh, photovoltaics make electrical power mostly during the daytime, but they don't make it in the nighttime. Wind energy is very variable. However, solar thermal technology can solve a lot of these problems. And I'm actually seeking the capital investment to go into mass production on these uh, solar energy systems. We can make electrical power at nighttime and electrical power even in the wintertime using solar and wind technologies together. AC alternating current base load electrical power. And also, we can also uh, solve a lot of problems uh, with solar thermal, uh, replacing the need for natural gas and do so cheaper. Uh, I'm an inventor. Keep in mind that practically every solar invention out there had an inventor behind there. So what I'm going to do here in the next few minutes is discuss some of these inventions uh, concerning solar smelter technology. So uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, let me just run over some of the technologies here. Uh, first one, solar smelter technology. It is a use of a parabolic half curve to create concentrated sunlight and which creates close to oh maybe 5,000 10,000 degrees that will melt rocks melt glass and vaporize tungsten this right here is one of my inventions patented by the patent office again it is a solar smelter that has no movement whatever it is uh, made out of rocks in fact this invention was used by the ancient Incas the ancient Egyptians to build the pyramid they melted smooth granite for the pyramids and even uh, for uh, other uses. Uh, they use gold, silver, and copper as a reflection material. And they built this throughout the whole world. This is actually a very lost technology. Uh, here's kind of a, a 3D dimension of what it looks like. You see there in the middle, you will see where the sunlight's concentrated and then the uh, sunlight is focused. It, uh, it has no moving parts whatsoever and that's what's neat about it. Uh, in, in engineering talk, we call it uh, no degrees of freedom. Uh, the next one over here shows it in a disassembled manner. Basically, what the end vision is going in mass production. You want to make it small enough to be able to put it into um, a shipping container, ship it to, say, a refugee camp, and, uh, uh, and then you assemble it. And you'll see the reflection curve there, and you see the frame for it, and you bolt it right together. Here back here is a backside view of the solar smelter. This is called the solar wedge solar smelter. Uh, a neat invention, low cost to make, and mass production. I like to turn out one every second. We could use it for all kinds of things. Um, one of the, I think its primary uses could be solar cooking, uh, making uh, glass, uh, shall we say, tools from metals and recycled materials. And then we can also um, use it as for sanitation, uh, processing wastewater. Uh, that would solve a lot of problems in disaster areas, like uh, you know during disaster they have diseases that pop up. So you can use these things to process wastewater. Now here is another patent. This one here uh, shows the use of a parabolic half shell to create uh, electrical power, AC electrical power. Basically, what happens is you make uh, compressed air blow it into the solar smelter, it uh, heats the thermal mass and makes hot air and then it goes into a wind chimney. The wind chimney uh, suctions the air out and the hot air is created by compression much like a jet engine. And what's neat about it, it has a curved overhang which keeps the uh, rainwater off of it. This invention here can make alternating electricity even in the winter time and even at night time. In fact, you build like square mile of these things, you run a small power plant or an oil refinery or an industrial plant. So this is actually a very major invention in that it solves the problem the photovoltaic industry has and the wind industry has a variability in that you can make electrical power 24 hours a day. Um, one of the things about this is that you store the energy in melted solar lava, melted rock, or melted sol uh, solar heated uh, salt. Consequently, you're able to generate energy 24 hours, seven days a week, just from the energy of wind and solar. The neat thing about wind energy, it's very available in the wintertime, and solar energy tends to be very available in the uh, summertime. 
And also, too, you can build small ones of these things to power, shall we say, a small farm. Its major market is utilities, and it would complement the electrical power supply of most utilities. Complemented that with uh, conservation and energy efficiency and photovoltaics, you've got a complete energy system without having to use fossil fuels. Uh, I'm kind of proud of this work. Uh, you can see my work here. And uh, this is another one of my patents, which is presently in the process of being licensed to a manufacturer. And it's a portable solar smelter. And uh, I'm hopeful that we can get this technology out there. Uh, what I have here is not just just a patent. I have a family of patents, a family of technology, all based upon the half-shell parabolic. What's unique about it is I'm able to focus the sun's rays into the ground, into like literally a hole in the ground, and uh, that makes it very safe. Other types of solar concentrators point the sunlight up in the air, which is kind of dangerous. And uh, this nice thing about this is this portable, and you put back in, uh, well, you can put it in your backyard, or shall we say for an African hut, uh, which uses uh, firewood and smoke and creates all kinds of problems and V vegetation. This thing here solves a lot of these problems. I am so proud of this work here. Um, whatever it is, I am looking for um, the capital investment to make this happen. Um, one of the big markets, I think, for solar technology is uh, water pumping. I have been doing a lot of research into solar water evaporation. It's known as heliohydroelectric. Basically, the idea is you use solar-powered water pumps to pump water into desert regions to flood dry salt lakes and this increases the amount of evaporation in the local region. The amount of evaporation then creates rainfall, which then increases the amount of vegetation, say, on a ranch. This would be very useful in solving the droughts in, say, California or in Australia or uh, uh, even the Middle East. Uh, what we can do here is use solar-powered water pumps to uh, solve um, drought problems. It also help in uh, solving global warming because the more vegetation we have out there, the more carbon dioxide it removes from the atmosphere. So there is a huge market for solar water pumping. By uh, integrating solar smelter technology, uh, what we can do here is get the cost of solar water pumping down so that it's very affordable uh, and also complement not just the existing electrical utilities and natural gas utilities, but also uh, supplement, shall we say, irrigation, ditch, uh, irrigation uh, utility districts and also water utilities. This is actually is a very large market, and what I envision are factories throughout the whole planet turning out one every second using automation. Uh, this is a fascinating project. Uh, I think there's a huge amount of uh, return from investment capital for this, and uh, consequently I'm asking for your ideas on how we can get this technology into mass production. Uh, thank you very much for listening to my little presentation here. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.